This is the music room. This room we usually use for temporary exhibits now, but at one time it would have been used as the music room. So they also had a large grand piano up here and they do a lot of after dinner entertaining and uh, guests would come up here and visit and they do a lot of family time up here as well after dinner. So this space we use for different temporary exhibits that come through. They usually last a couple months. At the moment it's bare, but we will have an exhibit later in the year. We have a lot of items up here that kind of represent the past history of the town a little bit. Different items that um, represent the period that the house would have been around. So this fireplace, for example, is one of the largest in the house of the four, and they're all original. Uh, different artwork that's been found locally, books, things like that. This bench that we have over to the side um, is from one of the churches in town, so it was uh, donated to the museum when the church closed. So this is one of the branches that shoots off from the music room. This area we have set up kind of as an office, and it kind of gives you an idea of some of the items that we have that are original to the home. So we have quite a few items that were original to Harry Oaks. So the desk down here would have been downstairs in his office that's in the front entrance. Um, it's a unique kind of a roll top desk, very different from the ones you see now because they're quite a bit taller. Um, old typewriter, kind of representing the time that he would have had it. We have a standing ashtray over here. His couch, which while its age is a little older, it's uh, holding up pretty good. Uh, radio over here that belonged to the chateau as well. This section we also use to highlight a little bit of the local policing history. So we highlight the Kirkland Lake Police Force, which ended its run in the 90s when the OPP came into town. So we focus a little bit on the chief and some of the different items that the police would have used at the time and a little bit of the uh, medical history as well, some of the doctors, and the Strand Theater, which was a theater that was the first, one of the first ones to open in Kirkland Lake in the 30s, and the first film there was The Gold Rush starring Charlie Chaplin, and um, there's photos from the interior, which a lot of people remember. The building was lost in a fire in 1986, so it uh, kind of represents the local history there as well. So this is another shoot-off from the music room. This is actually one of the favorite areas for kids because of the phone booth we have over here. When you close the door, the light comes on, and kids kind of get a kick out of the phone that's in there because it doesn't have dials like most of the ones you have today. We have an old switchboard over here, which uh, a lot of younger people find interesting because of all the cords you have to pull to uh, connect calls at different places, like a hospital would have had at one time. Over here we highlight one of our local celebrities from days gone by. This is Charlie Chow. He was originally from China, moved to Canada in 1900, made his way up to Kirkland Lake Camp around 1916, started off with a little lunch counter downtown, served a very basic meal to keep people well fed and well entertained, and then by the 1920s he opened up what became one of the more prominent hotels in the area. Charlie's Hotel was one of the first to have things such as an electric sign outside, a TV communal room in the downstairs area. We have quite a few items from the hotel itself here, different uh, checkbooks, uh, ordering books for food, the keys to the rooms, and some of the more significant items we have are the guest registries such as this. This is only one, but we have a dozen or so, and they all list the individuals who stayed in Charlie's Hotel at individual periods. So we have some ranging from the 20s all the way up to the 40s, and we have this wide range of people who came and stayed in the Kirkland Lake camp during that period. I've heard stories of people who could stay at Charlie's for seven or nine dollars a week, and they made about seven working in the mines, so they really made off pretty okay staying at Charlie's. He was significant in the area for the way he made his wealth. He would let people come in and pay with mind shares, and he would later reevaluate them at more money. So he made quite a bit of money that way. And it was quite a shock when he passed away in the 70s, but people had no idea how much money Charlie was worth. People estimated somewhere between one and eight million dollars because he was kind of private, kept his money well hidden, and he had it all kind of in stocks and bonds in different places. This section here off the music room is what we call our military section. So over here we highlight a little bit of the Kirkland Lake's um, con contributions to war efforts, such things as the Algonquin Regiment, which is really prominent in the area. And we have a few items that kind of represent the periods of which the Kirkland Lake force would have been fighting overseas. So we have some items from World War I, different helmets and things of the sort, and World War II era radios, helmets, weaponry, things like that. Uh, we have an old uniform in the corner to represent what uh, what kind of uniform people would be wearing at the time, and people are usually shocked at how scratchy the material is. Uh, we also highlight a couple of local individuals, and we have a list of those who perished during World War II. It's kind of an in-memoriam section. 
We talk about different uh, families that were significant for the area who highlighted the um, significance of the war effort. Um, there was actually a very interesting aspect of the Second World War where there was a ship called the HMCS Kirkland Lake. It was shut down after the war, but it was an honor that was given to the town due to its contributions and all the people that came from Kirkland Lake who contributed to the war effort. And unlike a lot of areas, the Kirkland Lake area during the war in the 30s wasn't suffering quite like the rest of the world during the Depression. Kirkland Lake, because of the gold industry, which was booming at the time, kind of flourished and the population grew to about 28,000 compared to its now approximately nine or 10,000.